China threatens Australia's iron ore industry. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my shine of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com.au that's discussing China's threats to Australia about our iron ore exports. They've gone after our barley, they've gone after our beef, and now it's, well, iron ore, which is frankly a huge portion of our economy. Now let's jump over here to Google Earth and I will turn on, this is the Operating Mines in Australia from the Australian Mine Atl Mines Atlas. And this is data from 2014. So it's a bit dated, but I mean, these mines take a long time to build, but it'll give you an understanding. Where is it? Iron ore. I'll just turn it on here. Have a look at where all these are and pretty much Western Australia, guys. We've got a few in other parts of Australia, but I mean, there you go. You can see why Western Australia exports so much or a large portion of our exports to China are coming out of Western Australia, out of the iron ore industry. I mean, look at that there, guys. You got, there you go. A couple in South Australia, Northern Territory. There we go. They've got one in Tasmania, two. But it definitely is a West Australian industry. And I'll bring up my favorite website, the OEC, Observatory of Economic Complexity. Iron ore is 20% of our exports. 48 billion may have increased since this data. I think it has actually significantly. But Australia is, we'll look up here in products. Australia is the largest iron ore exporter in the world. You can see here we're number one, followed by Brazil and South Africa. And recently, iron ore, we'll go to trading economics, has had a bit of a price fluctuation. We can go to commodities and let's have a look. Because one thing that happened with iron ore at the beginning of the year that drove it up was sadly a dam burst in Brazil and disrupted their supplies. So that pushed up the price of it. Now, the iron ore price affects the budget of our government here in Australia. So iron ore has just shot, shot up from 82 up to 89, but you can see it was over 100 in July of last year began the year here at $98. So it tanked to $80, shot up again, went back down, and it's climbing up at the moment. If it hits below 50, then our government's budget estimates will be in trouble. Then they'll be in trouble. So the fact that China, who Australia, we export most of our resources to, look at this here. Oh, hang on. We'll have a look at where Australia exports our iron ore to. We can click on this here for more info. Where does Australia export iron ore to? This is a fantastic website just to get a bit of an understanding of what's going on when they talk about all these big numbers. Well, there you go, 82%. 82% of our iron ore is going to China. So if that got a hit, you know, if their threats start playing out, well, that's gonna be a big impact on that industry. And I mean, here's the thing. It could be a political mover, maneuvering, it could just be a stunt, or it could just be the fact that they may not need as much iron ore because they've stockpiled a lot and their economy is also facing a recession. You know? What's, what will look better on the world stage? You know, denying something uh, you know, to, to appear strong or, you know, your demand trickling away because your economy is in recession because things are going much worse than you're letting on. I wonder. Let me let me know which one you th you think is more likely in the comments. So it's a wake up call. China threatens Australia's iron exports after the pandemic inquiry. China has threatened to cut off Australia's 63 billion iron ore export pipeline to Beijing as relations continue to sour over the pandemic inquiry. So you can see here now, the iron ore industry has grown even more. But I'd I'd bet a carton that the percentages of where it's going. Is still up there, you know. We're still heavily tied to China, our economy. There's a reason why, you know, currency traders pretty much use our currency as a proxy for the Chinese economy, guys. It's why Australia's currency is, I think, what the fifth most traded in the world. We're a country with not even 30 million people on the on the edge of the planet. Why do you think that is? We're not as important as people think we are, or as we like to think we are. 
China has threatened to cut off Australia's 63 billion iron ore export pipeline to Beijing following the Morrison government's calls for an international inquiry into the origins of the pandemic. Now, is there anything wrong with that? Do you think it's perfectly acceptable for our government to make those calls? Do you think they're threats? What are they an indication of? If they've got nothing to hide? Well, here's the thing. You can fall into the, the trap, the old where there's smoke, there's fire. If they've got nothing to hide, then why are they uh, threatening these actions? Or is it done for other reasons? Or are we just following the dictates of America? Regardless, we're, we're Australia's in a difficult situation. Why are we calling for it? Shouldn't more important countries be calling for it? We've barely suffered any uh, any health impacts of this. Few people have died in Australia because of this illness. We've managed to contain it one way or another. Our economy, sure, it's going to take a hit, but I mean, frankly, you know, we've had a property bubble for 20 years. We should have had a recession a while ago. Something was going to come along. Why are we calling it? Why aren't, why aren't some of the other major nations doing it? The Chinese government has hinted that Beijing's boycott of Australian exports could extend beyond beef and barley, described it as a wake-up call for the nation. Well, yes, it is a wake-up call. I think there are a lot of people that will be shocked, that will be shocked at our dependency on China. They'll be shocked about it. And this this is just exports. This data is a bit old, but it's the easiest I can get access to at the moment in such a visual form but you can see here how much of a percentage of our exports is that the china's our number one exports 35 percent then if we add on to that as well our tourism industry then if we add on to that our education industry so yeah guys this it will be a wake-up call for a lot of people it comes after china targeted beef and barley products this week sending panic throughout other industries fearing they could be next on the line. What about our, our, our crayfish industry? Australia is not our only option. And that's China's threat. And that's one thing we have to realize, guys. That's why if you're following my channel for a while, I tend to always prattle on about the complexity of our economy. That's because the less complex our economy is, the more primitive the resources that we're exporting are. Well, the the less of a moat we have or less of a competitive advantage we have particularly with all the african nations jumping onto belt and road they've got a lot of natural resources too they can shop somewhere else and sure there'll be other countries demanding what we have but are they going to you know are these other countries going to potentially do the crazy you know building that china did which is what saved australia from the gfc the Global Times newspaper, a mouthpiece for the communist government, suggests, should, suggests that China did not need Australian exports and could easily turn to Brazil for iron ore and other commodities. The latest meat import suspension and the possible imposition of major tariffs on Australia's barley exports don't necessarily represent China's economic punishment for Australia, though they may serve as a wake-up call for Australia to reflect on its economic links with China, the newspaper said. And that's exactly true. I mean, here, here we are. You've got to understand. I mean, ideologically, the political systems in Australia and in China are quite different. Sure, there's some similarities, but we are, we are well, for all, for all the faults of our political system, we still have a, you know, Western liberal democracy where we can have a vote and a say. And sure, we can bitch and moan, we can get frustrated at our leaders, but we can do that. We can do that. We have, well, normally, not now, the right to protest. And damn, that needs to come back really quick. Can you do that in China? So there's some fundamental ideological differences between our civilizations, everyone. And I think their time frames are at a much greater scale. Should we be so closely tied to such civilizations that have such ideological differences with ours, particularly with trade. You know, maybe we should be doing more business with Taiwan. We'll see. We'll see. 
While China is the only choice for Australia's massive commodity exports, Australia is not necessarily the only option for China. There are also other countries like Brazil that can supply huge amounts of iron ore, coal or LNG to China. China has already suspended meat imports from at least four Australian abattoirs amid souring relations between the two nations. Now, I've done a video on this and what I will do is I'll bring up I will bring up a, a, one of the comments I shared or a community post I shared. A viewer sent me the updated data because what I was looking at, I knew was a little old, but our exports to China have grown much more. So if we jump here, we can see 2017 when I was looking at frozen and chilled, it's definitely climbed up. It's, it's definitely increased significantly. So from about what under 40 up to 80, so over doubled. So it's going to have an impact, the restrictions on exports. And other viewers are saying in the comments as well, one viewer who's a farmer is saying, you know, people who expect there to be cheaper beef in the supermarkets, uh, it's going to, you know, the farmers will do everything they can to hold onto their, hold onto their cattle rather than sell it at a loss. Because apparently it's pretty cheap to keep it going. Let me know in the comments if you're a farmer, what do you think? So... The Kilcoy plant, Beef City in Toowoomba, and Dinmon Meatworks in Brisbane, and the Northern Cooperative Meat Company at Casino in New South Wales have been suspended by Australia's largest trading partner. China is the number one market for Australian beef, accounting for about 30% of exports. It comes after China's Ministry of Commerce gave the nation's barley producers 10 days to respond to an anti dumping investigation that's been conducted into Australian grain imports since 2010, threatening to slap them with tariffs of up to 80%. Up to 80%. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. The tariffs would be, in, well, he, the, here's the big issue. Where Trump is threatening to put tariffs on Chinese-made products, the consumers of the United States will pay for that. Because, well... China is producing goods, high-tech things, which they can't really get cheaper for somewhere else. So they'll either pay for it by paying for the tariffs from the Chinese manufacturers, or they'll go to more expensive manufacturers and pay for it then in other parts of the world. Here in Australia, they will slap the, well, the Chinese will slap these huge tariffs on our exports to them, and they will, they're suggesting, they can go to other suppliers around the world to get slightly more expensive products rather than paying these huge tariffs. Same thing that's happening in America. But the problem is the complexity of what we're exporting is so low, it's not advanced exports, guys. We're not an advanced economy. You know, our economic complexity is 59th in the world. If we look at the Harvard rating, guys, oh, hang on, wrong thing I've got to, got to click on. If we look at the Harvard rating, they've got us ranked at 93rd or 96th in the world with complexity. And here's the challenge, 93rd. Here's the challenge. We've gotten in this mess now. How are we going to get out of it? What can our civilization do to get a competitive advantage? Remember, we're at the edge of the world. And I know people are going to say, oh, Australia can be, this is the one I love. Australia can be a leader in soil or a leader in wind. That is one example that you hear all the time again. All we're doing is important stuff, guys. You know, none of that's made over here. We become the world leaders in important, importing, importing shit. Seriously. Importing German wind farms, setting them up and just, you know, having three people look at them. That's not industry. So there's the challenge. I, I would argue we should try and create special economic zones to encourage industry and manufacturing here, to give them significant, significantly reduced uh, government burdens so it can be competitive on a global scale because otherwise you know other people who are saying tariffs 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 in australia okay ask the people who argue for tariffs if they are fans of jerry harvey when he introduced gst on ebay purchases over a certain amount because he was doing essentially the same thing introducing a 10 percent tariffs on this section of the economy to protect local retailers and himself Remember, tariff is a tax that we pay one way or another. China has alleged that Australian farmers produce barley at a price lower than its normal level between 14 and 16, 
and is now considering two separate tariffs, a dumping margin of 73.6% and a subsidy margin of 6.9% on Australian barley exported to China. Australian relations with China have been heavily strained since Prime Minister Scott Morrison, among other world leaders, began pushing for an independent global inquiry into the pandemic. The Australian Workers' Union has written a letter of support to the PM saying he must stand firm against the Chinese government. It surprises me. Australians should resist any attempts to be bullied, AWU National Secretary Daniel Wharton said in the letter. It is critical the Australian government holds its nerve against such pressure and enforces its international and domestic rights. It might suit billionaires who have cosy relationships with the CCP for our government to roll over, but AWU members expect their government to stand for them and defend the national interests, he said. The AW, AWU boss called on the government to establish a trade NATO bloc powerful enough to take on China's preferred approach to bilateral bullying. The integrity of Australia's trade regime is paramount to sovereignty, he wrote. He noted with concern the pressure being placed upon the Australian government with respect to the integrity of its trade regime. So China dodges questions on motivations. One third of Australia's exports, including iron ore, gas, coal and food, are exported to our largest trading partner, bringing in around $135 billion per year. Chinese authorities are continuing to dodge the questions of whether trade strikes were politically motivated. Of course they are. China's Minister of Foreign Affairs, spokesman Zhao Linjin, said the trade strikes on abattoirs, which were first reported on Tuesday, were due to quarantine and custom standards violations, as opposed to the country's fury with Canberra over the pandemic inquiry. As to the Australian-launched inquiry into the pandemic, as is well known by all, the origin of the, vi the virus requires the assessment of specialists and scientists, Mr. Zhao said on Tuesday night. Using the virus for political manoeuvring will only disrupt the epidemic cooperation. This will only be an unpopular move. China always believes that mutual respect and equality should be the basis for the development of bilateral relations. Mutual respect should be the basis of good relations. Federal Trade Minister Simon Birmingham confirmed his Chinese counterpart had not responded to requests to discuss the diplomatic row. We have not secured said meeting yet. I would hope that would be forthcoming, he told Parliament yesterday. He added, it was most appropriate that industry sort out the problems with Chinese administrators directly. Senator Birmingham also told Australian companies to make sure all their paperwork is in order so that more industries cannot be targeted following reports of fears among Australian dairy and wine producers. Everyone at present should be, as they always should, dotting their I's and crossing their T's and leaving no scope for any grievance to be raised. Mr. Morrison said China's claims relating to paperwork and related to paperwork and administration issues. Well, remember, what was it? There was a furniture importing business here in Australia that we talked about earlier this year that had stuff held up in Australian quarantine because of paperwork issues. Business is gone, went bust, didn't, couldn't last a month, couldn't, didn't have the product to sell. So maybe our businesses are now suffering the fate from overseas counterparts that Australian businesses have suffered already from our own bureaucrats. He told Parliament that Australia had raised trade issues with China frequently and will continue to do so. From time to time, there will be differences of views about those issues and we will seek to progress them very constructively in the national interest, always in the national interest, Mr. Morrison said. A separate article in the Good Times discouraged Chinese citizens from doing business with Australia. It now seems necessary to advise Chinese people and companies to watch out for potential risk when it comes to doing business or studying in Australia, the opinion article said. Well, here's the thing. I mean, that's going to affect our real estate industry. I think a lot of people don't actually appreciate, or I think the average people don't appreciate how in bed our country is with China. And that's, that's showing you that that opens us up to political risk. Because Australia is a small country. It really is. Maybe we need to get more people immigrating over here and just, you know, build some cities in the middle of the country. Have a land grab, you know. How, how many people, unemployed people living in the city? Okay, 
you know, there you go. Let free land. Start farming. Let's start <laughs> homesteading the middle of the nation. What do you reckon? Build some dams. China's ambassador to Australia, Sheng Jingui. Oh, I buggered that up. Warned the nation could face an all-out boycott if the pandemic inquiry continues. He told the Australian Financial Review last month the country may face a Chinese boycott of its tourism and exports of wine, beef and other goods if the PM pressed for an inquiry. Well, there you go. I think that's a very clear threat. But Peter Jenkins, executive director of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, said this was unlikely. Trade with China is always inherently political. It's something the CCP uses to achieve political objectives as well as economic ones, he told ABC World Radio. Most of what I think we're seeing is bluster rather than real action. He added that the Australian government was right to pressure an inquiry into the origins of the pandemic. I'd make a point also that it's one thing to stop buying bananas from the Philippines, but if you're going after Australia, you're going after a G20 country. That's going to be noticed all around the world, and I think that would be very counterproductive to Chinese interests. But are we only a G20, G20 country because we're exporting to China? And will we remain a G20 country with the recession that we're about to have? Well, guys, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think just political posturing? Do you think it'll have an impact on the Australian economy? Do you think people realize what the issues can be? I mean, if they, they're going to start turning off one way or another demand for our products, even, even, without, even without all of this political posturing, their demand for Australian goods are going down because they're heading for a recession, just like everyone else. So this can just could just exacerbate what's going to happen. As always, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve or KuCoin. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.